Okay, welcome, welcome to the Village of Wappingers Falls monthly regular meeting of the Mayor and Board of Trustees today, Wednesday, February 10th, 2021. Pledge allegiance to the flag. Pledge allegiance United to the flag. To the flag. United, States United States of America. And to the Republic. To the Republic. 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 One nation under God, indivisible, liberty and justice for all. Okay, recognition announcements, special events. I would like to recognize, I'm not only the village clerk, I'm also the receiver of complaints. I would like to say during this past big storm we had a week ago that many residents called me praising the village highway department for the outstanding job they did under far less than ideal conditions. The streets, when I looked out, even when I looked out my window at home on Fulton Street, the next morning the streets were perfectly clean and drivable. So I think they should be commended for the outstanding job they did during that storm. Any other announcements, special events? Okay. Can I have roll call? Trustee Markajan. Here. Trustee Catalano. Here. Trustee Nesnick. Here. Trustee Huber. Present. Trustee Panessa. Here. Trustee Lammers. Here. Village Attorney Wallace. Here. Tonight's meeting has been convened in accordance with the governor's March 13, 2020 executive order 202-1 as extended, which suspends certain provisions of the open meetings law to allow a municipal board to convene a meeting via video conferencing in accordance with the executive order, the public has been provided with the ability to view and to participate in tonight's meeting by computer, smartphone, or telephone, and to view the meeting and the usual cable television channels. The recording of the meetings will be posted to the village website and a written transcript of the meeting will be prepared and provided at a later date. There has been a roll call of the board members and there is a quorum present for this meeting. I have also confirmed with the clerk that this meeting has been duly noticed. We have fulfilled our legal notice requirements by posting a copy of the notice of the meeting on the village website and the village bulletin board. We have emailed a copy of the notice to the media and we have confirmation that the legal notices of the public hearings have been properly published. First on the agenda is a continuation of the hearing that, that we started from on January 13th and discussed it again on January 27th and it was adjourned to tonight. Okay. Uh, yes, so thank you, um, Mr. Karsh. Um, as you are all aware this is a continuation of the public hearing that, that um, has been a collaboration um, on the adoption of our police reform initiative this uh, is governor cuomo's under governor cuomo's executive order requires all local governments in new york state to adopt a police reform plan by april 1st 2021 the order authorizes the New York State Budget Director to condition state aid to localities on the adoption of such a plan. So this is a very important process in, uh, in, in, to our uh, police department and uh, in complying with the governor's executive order. Now, as I mentioned, um, this is the third uh, date of our public hearing. Um, before we had our public hearing, uh, as you heard from Commissioner Burke, there were five collaboration meetings with members of the public, which uh, comprised a cross section of um, individuals in our community, in our, in our village, um, who uh, come from all uh, different backgrounds and life experiences and collaborated in formulating the policy the, that has been on our website and that has been uh, before you and has been before the public for comment. So without um, any further ado, 
I want to turn the meeting over back over to Commissioner Burke to, um, you know, see if there were any other further public comment uh, that we that the board needs to consider. Um, at the end of Commissioner Burke's um, comments, we will let the public uh, speak. And after uh, that is done, somebody can make a motion to close the public hearing. And uh, should the board deem appropriate, can take action to ratify the plan. Okay, so Commissioner Burke, is there anything that you would like to add to what I just said? Um, yes, I've um, been checking into other forms of uh, doing our police uh, policies and procedures over. I um, talked with another group called Power DMS. Um, they showed me what they had to offer. And right now I'm comparing both um, them and the Lexi poll as far as what one of the things we've definitely looked at our committee with of, of uh, updating our policies and procedures uh, to limit our liability in the department and also make um, the public uh, more transparent as far as how we operate. Uh, these policies can be posted on our website for the public to view and uh, any changes that um, we decide to make in our policies and procedures. Uh, not only will this company help us to do that, but we will re be reaching out to an advisory committee that I hope to form in the future that will um, uh, get a, a review of the policy that we're thinking of changing and make sure that um, there's no conflict uh, with the community on what we're planning on doing. Um, we also, I just wanna, I don't think I've mentioned it before, um, we're always looking to uh, hire a diverse um, candidates, uh, look for diverse candidates for our department. Um, we advertise um, on the internet now so that we can get a bigger range of, of uh, reaching people who might be interested in working for our department. Um, when we do this, is only for our part-time officers. Um, we don't get them off the civil service list. When we do hire a, a person for a full-time position, we have to go through the procedure of the civil service. So we're kind of limited on who we can look at when uh, the civil service list comes down. It's only the candidates that are given to us at that time. Um, with us advertising for uh, part-time positions, we can look uh, further out into the different communities to try to find the most qualified um, uh, person for the job and hopefully a diverse candidate at the same time. Um, we, we continue to look to try to um, change things that we do in our department presently. Um, like I said, uh, reach um, our, our, camera our camera program has been in effect for over five years now. We were one of the leaders in the county of regarding it, one of the first departments. Uh, because of this reform, many departments are now trying to put together a, a camera program, which is not an easy thing to do. Uh, it's a big expense. And a lot of time has to go into um, setting it up and maintaining it. So we're way ahead of that right now, as far as that. That was one of the major uh, requirements that departments are being looked uh, being told that they'd like their officers to be wear cameras at all times. So we're, we've got that accomplished. Um, so, like I said, we're 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 always looking. We're going to be looking to the community. We're going to be sending out a survey in April. Um, well, I'm hoping to have some interns from a local college help us uh, compile all the results so we can get an actual uh, reading on what else that we could be doing for the community. Because um, even with this reform and us advertising, we didn't get too much response from the community. Um, our committee that we put together was great. They were there. They were talked to us about different things. But um, from the government, we didn't get a real feeling of what they wanted. So hopefully, with us mailing out a survey in April, we can, you know, tell them about the programs we're doing and see what else we can change in the department. Um, so that is where we're basically at now. Um, like I said, our biggest thing after hopefully we get this um, passed, um, that we can continue to talk on how we can improve our department. Uh, and like I said, I'm hoping someday um, that we've become an accredited department, which will be a big accomplishment for us. So if we can do that, um, we've really accomplished a lot out of this. Um, so that's basically all I have to say today on this topic. All right, thank you, Commissioner Burke. I mean, I think what um, 
Commissioner Burke was touching upon is this is not the end of the road. Even if you do adopt this particular reform initiative, this is going to be continued to be in, the plan has to be implemented. It will be monitored. Um, there have to be progress reports and, and metrics to the public that have to be reported to the state. So, um, you know, this is just the uh, first step of many um, on a yearly basis and, and it will continue to, um, you know, uh, to, to be implemented, added to, modified, improved. Um, you know, so this is not a final product by any means. Uh, is there any members of the public here that, um, that are on this call that would like to make any comments? Um, or uh, comment about anything um, that we've talked about or make any comments uh, about the plan. Is anybody here on this particular subject? Reverend Hunt was commented last meeting. He's on the meeting call. Is there anybody else? Uh, this is Cheryl Wallace, the senior parole officer. No, I, I was on the last call as well. Um, I didn't have a comment. Uh, basically, Reverend Hunt had spoke what I uh, basically made a comment in regards to what I was, my question was last uh, meeting, but um, everything seems to be, you know, done very well. Thank you. Thank you for coming out. I'm sorry, ma'am. I didn't get your number or your name. My name is Cheryl, C-H-E-R-Y-L. My last name is Wallace, W-A-L-L-A-C-E. No relation to me, right? <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. But that, just wanted the record to reflect. Got All it. right. Thank you. So you guys are uh, pretty much at the end of the road. You can either adjourn this once again for public comment and keep the public hearing open. You can close the public hearing. And then if uh, it is the pleasure of the board, you can take action to ratify the plan. So do I have a motion? I make a motion to close the public hearing and to ratify the plan. I'll second it. Okay. Can I get a roll call, John? So the first motion okay. would be to close the public hearing. I have a motion by Trustee Catalano to close the public hearing. I didn't get who seconded it. Trustee Lammers. Okay. <clears throat> roll call vote. Trustee Marka John. Aye. Trustee Catalano. Catalano. Aye. Trustee Nesnick? Aye. Trustee Huber? Aye. Trustee Vanessa? Aye. Trustee Lammers? Aye. Carried. Okay, then there's a motion now to ratify the plan. I would like to make a motion to, to ratify the plan at this point. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. They carried unanimously. All right. Um, so at this point in time, Sorry. tomorrow, John, we will uh, forward a um, what is attached to the meeting um, packet as a, Appendix B, which is basically the resolution passing the reform initiative it will be an identical format to Appendix B. Um, I'd ask that you fill it out using um, Kevin Huber as Deputy Mayor, as our Chief Executive Officer. Um, and then he, he will have to uh, sign and um, we can get it up to Albany and we will be in compliance. At that point in time, then we can discuss certain vendors that you've uh, been introduced to you guys can start looking into, um, you know, how to implement the plan after adoption. Okay, but as of now, it looks like we're on our way to compliance and uh, want to thank everybody for participating in this very important venture. It's very important that, you know, we, uh, our, our police department be recognized, but also um, be held accountable 
um, you know, to the public and transparent. And um, this particular initiative will do all of the above. And I commend everybody who, who got us to this point. So thank you very much. Um, all right, John, we are on to the next. Uh, okay, agenda. I will get that appendix B out tomorrow. Yep. Okay, next on the agenda, action on minutes January 13th and January 27th. Can I have a motion to approve? I'll make it. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. Authorization to pay bills as approved the warrant. I'll make that motion. That is Trustee Nesnick. I'll second. Trustee Catalano. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. Regular session, discussion with New York State DOT would like to purchase a portion of village owned property for the sum of $2,500. Attorney Wallace. Okay, John, thank you. Um, actually, we have a uh, guest representative from the um, New York State Department of Transportation here with us today, Dave Walker, who is going to tell you basically the who, what, and why of what this acquisition is all about. This has to do with a um, widening a portion of the um, Wappingers Bridge uh, at the inner, at the um, boundary of the town of Poughkeepsie into the village um, right around uh, Wappingers Lake. And um, it would be for the purpose of um, installing uh, and widening a, uh, the sidewalks in that particular area. Um, I, I would like to hand the floor over to Dave Walker, who's going to explain what the project is and any um, comments or questions that you might have about the compensation part. I think that that would need to come in an, in an executive session discussion um, as that is uh, appropriate topic um, for that particular venue. So I'm gonna ask, um, Dave, are you on the call right now? Speaking yeah, up. can you hear me? Yep. So Dave, can you explain to, to the Board of Trustees exactly who you are, what you do, and what capacity you're here? Okay, um, yeah, I'm uh, Dave Walker. I'm uh, not only a lifelong uh, village resident, but I'm also a land surveyor for the New York State Department of Transportation. And I've surveyed all the property in question here. Uh, I made this survey map for the state acquisition, what the state wants to take from the village or, or purchase, let's say. So um, if I could just do a little presentation here to show you what this property is and the history behind it, uh, I think it might be interesting. Um, so let me just uh, share this screen here quick. Can everybody see this screen with a picture of the lake, an aerial picture? Yes. I don't, okay, yes. I don't hear anybody. So. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. So let me let me just start with this. Uh, I'm going to zoom in here. The the piece of land in question is right where I'm circling my uh, scroller or my, my thing here. Okay. Everybody know where this is? This is the lumber liquidators property. This is the bridge across the lake. It, yes. List Road. We all know where we are. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let me talk about the history of how we got this piece of property first. Uh, so I got to take you back to 1929. Okay. In 1929, the lake was owned by the Bleatry, uh, the Duchess Bleatry Corporation. Okay. The, the deed to the lake is this purple line that I'm highlighting out here. It's, um, can everybody see where the lake goes? It's yeah. That, yeah. that purple line. Okay. The Bleatry owned that entire, uh, piece of property, which is the Wappagers Lake, all the way down to the dam, all the way in the village. Okay, now within that, the village line is this green line right here. It goes over from the corner of the rural cemetery over to the back of the List Road properties and then along List Road. Every, everything out here that I'm circling is the lake that was owned by the Bleatry 
but it's not in the village. This this portion in here is town of Wappinger. This portion over here is town of Poughkeepsie. And this portion over here is town of Poughkeepsie also. So let's go back to 1929. Route 9 did not exist through here in 1929. It, it, um, it came down through the village and uh, down West Main and back up East Main and out near Walgreens. And it didn't exist through here. So in 1929, the state decided to bypass the village and bring Route 9 down through here. They purchased a strip of land from the Bleatree, who owned the lake at the time, to build Route 9 through here. What they did was they built, the rather than bridge from all the way over here, from the edge of the lake, all the way over to here to the edge of the lake, they built a, a land peninsula here, to, and, a, and they built some land in here so they could have a short span of a bridge. That's the old steel bridge that uh, some of us, if we're old enough, all remember. Um, that was built in 1930, so it broke up the lake into kind of two pieces, okay? At that time, the edge of the lake was right where my scroller is here, this purple line. The, it didn't go out where it went, where it goes today. If you can see out here, this is all fill that was filled in to um, build the bridge across well, across the lake, okay? So... So what I'm saying is this was the deed line to the lake, this purple line right here. Now let's uh, fast forward to 1967. In 1967, the village purchased the lake from the Bleatree. Okay. Not only the portion of the lake that's within the village, which is all, which is all down in here, we purchased the entire property that the Bleatree owned, which is much of it is outside of the village. It's this whole part of the lake. It's also this, it's also this whole part of the lake over here, including all this land. I don't think most people know this, but all this land right here in my scroller is owned by the village because the Bleatree owned it, and that's what we purchased. We purchased the exact deed that the um, the Bleatree owned. So now we, we as the village, own everything inside this purple. Okay. So, right. So, so this over here is town of Poughkeepsie. This here is town of Wappingers right here. This over here is town of Poughkeepsie and the little strip of the creek from the center of the creek here over to the bank is town of Wappinger. So, so this piece here is in the town of Wappinger. It's outside of the village, but it's owned, it's owned by the village. And that's where some of the confusion might be that why are we, why we own property outside of the village? Because we bought the lake and the lake happened to be in three towns and we bought the whole lake. Okay. So now I'm going to uh, fast forward to 1983. 1983, the state purchased some property from the village. The village now owned the lake at that time. That's when we ripped down the steel bridge and we built this new bridge across. Um, we, we took pro more property from the village because the original strip right through here was not very wide. It was only two lane traffic back when the old steel bridge was there. In 1983, we turned this into six lanes. And as you can see, these two red lines here are the width of the state acquisition. We, they, they already done this once to the village. They've taken property from the village and widened Route 9. And now the state owns this entire strip between these two red lines all the way across here. But what the state doesn't own is this little piece of land from the lumber liquidator's parking lot, this down slope in here which used to be the lake, but it got filled in to build the bridge. But we still, just as we own the lake, we own this little strip of land because the lake used to be here, okay? So there's a little piece of land left over right in here, and that's what we own. Now, let me try to, uh, now I'll get to the what the state wants to do here. Um, let me just uh, try something here. I just wanna make something a little more clear. This is distorted this particular picture yeah that's why i'm yeah i got something in my way here that i'm trying to get out of the way and i'm going to undistort that in a second uh there's a yeah, it gets turn more off pic there. when you zoom in it seems to get more pixelated you can't really yeah that, that, that yeah that happens to us and uh, uh we'll fix that in a second and then i'll explain the the what what the like what the state is trying to do here uh let me put on a different aerial picture and this might be a little bit better yeah this is a little bit better. It's still going to get pixelated, but it's a little more clear. Yeah. Okay. So, so 
So I explained that this is the property that uh, the village owns. It's just useless piece of property. It's a down steep slope down to the lake from the parking lot of this mm -hmm. um, lumber liquidators. The actual property line is this red line here. Um, so <clears throat> here's the deal. The state now is building a new bridge across here. They want to build sidewalks from Woodhill Green down here. Uh, it's off my photograph, but you know, you know, uh, Alto Music and Woodhill Green apartments down here. Yep. They want to build a sidewalk all the way along this side of Route 9 uh, um, on the town side, all the way down across the new bridge and all the way up to Coles. Uh, the, the state has been doing a lot of walkable community work. They, they're putting in sidewalks and crosswalks and trying to make communities more walkable. Um, as you know, they've done it down near um, on 9D in front of the Knights of Columbus and up West Main. So one of the projects here, Right, right now, you can walk on a sidewalk from Wendless Terrace all the way down to Mazir Avenue on that side of uh, Route 9. What the state plans in the future is to jump across Route 9 at the crosswalk in front of Gino's restaurant there mm -hmm. and create a new sidewalk coming all the way down past Lumber Liquidators across the new bridge and all the way up to Coles. So then you'll have pedestrian access throughout the entire stretch of Route 9 and Wappingers. Okay. So... With that said, right now, there's a piece of sidewalk right in here from the top of my cursor down to the bottom of my cursor. Uh, it's, it's a useless piece of sidewalk. I don't know why it was ever built, but uh, the only thing I can imagine is back in the 80s, I think we channelized this entrance. Uh, you used to be able to just drive in these parking lots anywhere you wanted to, and they curbed it here and you know made an exit here. With that channelization, for some reason, they built a sidewalk right in here, okay? Uh, I say it's useless because you can't, nobody can walk on it to go anywhere. You, no, Nobody has any use to get on this sidewalk and walk this way because it'll just lead right into the lake, okay? So, so the state wants to incorporate that sidewalk into the bigger project that is going to be a sidewalk all the way across the bridge. But when we widened Route 9 in the 80s, we barely took enough property here to get the driving lanes in. This red line right here that I'm highlighting is the boundary line of Route 9 uh, that exists today. Not enough room for us to build a sidewalk between the driving lane and the highway boundary. We want the sidewalks to be within the New York State Highway right-of-way. So what the state is doing here is this rectangle piece right here, the state is purchasing this piece a property from the village to use this sidewalk, fix it up and bring it across the new bridge when, when it's built. Okay. So there's two pieces of property that they need to acquire. One is, one is they're going to acquire in fee. The state will own this. The boundary line will move from, from right here back to here. It's a seven foot strip. The state is going to get this property from us. The other piece is another 10 foot temporary easement, which you guys brought up at the last meeting. Uh, but I don't think you were aware of the fee acquisition. But anyway, the temporary easement back here is is needed to do all the construction work for the new sidewalk, the new bridge. Whenever we do a project, we usually take a strip behind what we need to purchase because you need to get construction equipment in there. You can't just drive construction equipment in private property. You have to take a temporary easement from whoever owns the property, in this case, the village, to get your equipment in there and do the work. Right. When the project is done, the temporary in, uh, easement will extinguish and we'll be left with a new highway boundary of Route 9, which will be this line right here, enough room to build a sidewalk or finish this the existing sidewalk and bring it down through here. Uh, hey, Dave. I, don't, I don't know why we, I don't know why we only made the Route 9 so thin in the 80s, because if you notice, we, the state acquired way back to here and way back over to here for some reason. It looks like they went way overboard and got a lot of extra property that they didn't need, but there must have been a reason for it. But all of a sudden, they come down this line and got real tight onto the highway, and uh, that left us with no room to build the sidewalk. Okay? So that's about the gist of it. Um, all right, Dave, I got a question. Have a question? Uh, yeah, the, um, the 
permanent, the fee taking, like how long would you say that, that, that uh, area is, that is village owned? Um, you know, how many feet is that? Uh, per- the length of it, I have the take map right in front of me. I made the take map and it's uh, 78 feet on the back. It's from, from this point right here to this point over here is 78 feet. So it's a seven foot wide strip, 78 feet long. Okay. This, that's what the state wants to get from the village. And okay. through eminent domain, they're going to get this, whether you, you, this is not something that you guys really need to, oh, we approve this or we're going to fight this. We don't want it. it it's a worthless cause. You're, they're going to get the property through <laughs> eminent domain and it's, right. and it's almost pretty much useless to, to the village. Yeah. Right. So I, I think uh, there was some, some uh, talk about purchase of property. Um, that, that wasn't from me because when the state wants something, they get it. Yeah, you're right. Get it. Yeah. yeah. You're not it's, hold the condom- it it's a condemnation. So it's yes. for the public good. Obviously yes. this is, this is a, uh, you know, a, a project for the public good. And right. um, the state has taking powers just as the village has taking powers. We could take right. private property if we needed for, um, you know, to better the public good, to, to make yeah. a public improvement. But, um, you know, when the state comes in and, um, you know, they, they file the, the, what we call the taking maps, which Dave prepared, that is when the uh, state vests, um, uh, uh, the vesting goes right to the state. And at that moment in time, they are liable to the village for just compensation of that strip of land. Um, that they took in fee that they've just described. And, um, you know, so the, can... co- so the compensation isn't for the strip of land they're taking. The compensation is for the land they're using to park their trucks. Both. It's for both. No. No, no what? It's, there it's will the... be, there will be two. I, I don't get into the numbers because our real estate department, uh, I'm not authorized to speak about the price and all that, but the state is buying a strip right through here for a certain fee. And I think, uh, Craig, you might know what that fee is. I forget what it was. And then a separate purchase of a a temporary purchase for a different fee behind it. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. The second, the second purchase will extinguish, but we still get paid because we're, the state is, uh, encumbering your property for a period of time. And there's some value to that encumbrance. And, Usually with a temporary easement, a, a, a property owner would get a smaller fee than uh, than with a fee acquisition. Uh, so it's, it's a little it's bit sort larger. Of like a lease, right? We just release yeah. it. Yeah. We're going to pay you for the use of this. And when we're done, we're done. The, yes. the state, the state has to take the minimum um, land that, that that is available to them. Um, right. Yeah. yeah. Right, we only can take what we're only supposed to take what we need. need. So, yeah. you know, uh, that's why the state doesn't just take the whole 17 feet and just say, oh, we right. we need a work area in here. Right. We we only want to acquire what we need. So that's why we do the temporary easement uh, behind the fee for room, just room to work. It's called grading, seating and a work temporary easement for grading, seating and a work area. Right. That, that, that means we use it. We put it back the way it was, neaten it up, grade it back, seed it if need be, uh, fix it back up the way it was before we uh, started messing it up by construction <laughs> equipment. We try to make it actually better. Right. Hey, Dave, um, how, how long do you yeah. think this project would take um, from start to finish? Well, let me start with the, the tentative date for this to begin is next March, not next month, but next March, March of 22. Uh when I do my work, I did my work here about a year ago. I'm usually like two years ahead of a project because there's a lot that goes on before the actual construction. Right now, it's like going out to bid to contractors, and uh, it's it's the length of time on the co- uh, on it that I don't know. Uh, but it is going to be a real pain, I think, for uh, <laughs> for traffic here because I can uh, I don't know what you're gonna. I guess what they're gonna do is you know, like you do in a lot of cases, build a half a bridge and move all the traffic onto one side and then mm-hmm. and then move the traffic over the other side and build the other half, something like that. I don't know the exact construction plan or the timeline on it, but I do know we're about a year off of it beginning. Oh, uh, I look forward to it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, we get bad enough traffic backing up through here, you know, on yeah. busy days. Everybody's cutting through List Road and Mazir Avenue. I, I could imagine it's only going to get worse when they do this. <laughs> well, then you're going to have the traffic through the village is going to be uh, right. crazy for a while. So it's going to be a little bit of a hassle. Yeah. So the entire bridge span is going to be replaced? Yes. Yeah. Well, I imagine that's probably better than having that bridge span fall down. <laughs> yeah. It's just funny to some of us that are older here. It just seems like yesterday that they tore down the steel bridge and built this. But uh, because you know uh, we remember the '80s when they built this thing, and it just that seems new. But mm -hmm. 1984 is now 40 years ago, <laughs> so the bridge is the bridge is that old already, and old. the stay is determined. It's in need of replacement. Wear and tear. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. So uh, that's all I have. And uh, and bottom line, and the other thing is, if you notice here, we're also taking a strip from the lumber liquidator property, because uh -huh. as you can see here, there's a rectangle right here where my cursor is. That's right. the fee take. There's also a second rectangle right here where my cursor is, because it's a, that that's owned by lumber liquidator. We're paying them for a seven foot strip also. So the state will own back to this line. Then sometime in the future, there wasn't enough money in this project to build the sidewalk all the way down to Wood Hill Green. But as you can see here, the highway boundary all the way down through here is a little tight with the road and there's not enough room to build a sidewalk all the way on down. Uh, you know, it gets a little more room up here. We might be able to squeeze it in here, but uh, there'll probably be further purchase, not from the village, but in the future, there'll probably be further purchase from the lumber liquidator property. And then, uh, I forget who owns this wooded property in front of Wood Hill Green, but they'll probably have to purchase a strip from them too to get the sidewalk all the way down to Wood Hill Green. But that's another project, and I don't have any timeline on when that's going to be done. Uh, the way money budgets are tight these days, that could be a fantasy that they're just, you know, someday in the future. Mm -hmm. All right. Any other questions of uh, trustees? or members of the public. No, it looks good. It's going to look okay, good. So, yeah, so that gives, that gives a little history on this property over here. I didn't know, I never knew this before I surveyed it, that the village owned all this property on the other side of the bridge, including all this land. I don't know, I don't know what you could do with it, but it's, it's a village property. Hmm. So I That's thought that was interesting. Good to know. Okay. Okay. So, let me see. How do I unshare my screen? Anybody know? Uh, <laughs> That's a Rich Kalen question. Because <laughs> hmm. before I saw a, a square that I could hit to share my screen. Now I don't see how to unshare it. And then you guys can continue with your meeting. Well, thank you, Okay, Dave. here now. Okay, thank here you. I see. Here I see. Oh, okay. You guys unshared it for me? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I'm just going to go on mute then, and uh, if anybody has a, I'll listen for the rest of the meeting, and if anybody has a question, uh, let me know. Thank Thanks you, Dave. Me. I think that was an outstanding job bringing that to all of our attention. Uh, I didn't know that, and I lived here most of my life, and uh, it was very interesting. I think you did a real, yeah. real fine job of bringing that to our attention and any of the viewers. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. You're okay. Welcome. I am prepared to go ahead with the resolution for this project. No, I think what we need to do is we need to discuss the compensation part in executive oh. session. If, okay. um, if the board um, is inclined to accept the compensation, we'll come out of executive session at that point in time with some action. Okay, next on the agenda, approval 30-day waiver for liquor license, Flores Food Group Incorporated 1659 Route 9 that the building uh, inspector approved. We have a resolution number two, 2021. Resolution waiving 30 day liquor authority license, hold period for Flory's Food Group Incorporated. The following resolution, uh, whereas Flory's Food Group Incorporated by its representative Stanger Diamond and Glass LLP has made application to New York State Liquor Authority for a liquor, wine, beer, and cider license for its establishment. And whereas the village has been provided a statutory 30-day advance notice 
And whereas the village board, upon the recommendation and approval of the building inspector, has no objection to the grant of the liquor license to Flory's Food Group Incorporated, and hereby waives its right to the 30 day hold on the application for the liquor license. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the village board of the village of Wappingers Falls hereby waives its right to require the 30 day hold period on the application for Flory's Food Incorporated. And I have a motion to accept that waiver, to make that waiver. I'll, I'll make it. it. Trustee I'll Huber. Trustee Panessa, second. All in favor? Aye. Roll call Aye. vote. Uh, Deputy Mayor Huber. Aye. Trustee Markajan. Aye. Trustee Nesnick. Aye. Trustee Panessa. Aye. Trustee Catalano. Aye. Trustee Lammers. Aye. Carried. William T. Garner Engine Company voted in uh, Mr. Santoro as a junior member of the company and department. Can we have approval of that correspondence? I'll make it. I'll second it. Seconded by Trustee Lammers. Accept resignation of police officer Cecil Thomas effective February 28th. I'll make it. Second. Second. Second, Trustee Lammers. Correct. All in favor? Aye. 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 Carried. Accept resignation of PA Ruska effective January 30th. PA is police assistant. I'll make it. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. Hey John, uh, just I wanted to let you know on the um, Santoro appointment, there was no motion made. So can we just go back and finish that? Uh, we and T. Garner it. Company voted in Mr. Santoro as junior member of the company of department. Motion by Trustee Hoover, seconded by Trustee Lammers. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Aye. Carried. Okay, I have monthly stats here from the Village Police Department. I, If you have it in front of you, you can see where I put January 2020 in alongside of January 2021 for comparison. Number of calls, this year 284, last year 340. Arrest, eight, last seven. Traffic tickets, 150, last year 226. Calls out, 12, last year eight. Calls out other, six, last year 11. Shifts not covered, 10, same last year. Domestics, 10, last were eight. Blackouts, 13, last year 14. Larcenies, three, same as last year. Drug complaints, none, one last year. Criminal mischief, six none a year ago. Accidents, nine, last year were 20. Assault calls, zero, same as last. Burglar alarms, five, a year ago were 19. Medicals, 69, last year 50. Civilian complaints, none, same as last year. Parking tickets are up 67, 47 a year ago. Use of force, one this year. Highway Department. No, uh, I would like to uh, thank the highway, as John did earlier, for the job they've done throughout the storm. I know they, they spent 38 hours uh, in last week's storm from plowing and taking care of everything. And I think the guys, they did an awesome job doing what they had to do. And they came in on week 
this past weekend to do some extras for us. We're trying to save a little money. So you guys did a really great job. And that's all I have for highway. Everybody on South Mazir Avenue says thank you. Really, really I, did a good job. Great. It did a great. I, he has he had a he had a he has a cleanup list and there's of complaints and stuff he's done and there's like 30 of them he's already accomplished so far since the storm. And I also would like to bring up on our, our parking lots is maybe we can, I don't know, we got to either get these cars out of the parking lots after the snow event or we go, we take the parking the cars out of the parking lot during the snow event because there's there's been some complaints about the parking lots that cars stay there, especially in the Mill Street lot. Not so much the new Franny Reese parking lot, but the Mill Street lot, there's been cars parked there and they don't move and the guys can't plow and people just park on top of the old snow where no one touched it, you know? So, I, I mean, we got to work on something. <laughs> Do we need signage or something? There is a there's signage. There's there is a signage. signage there. They need tickets. Yeah, there is a signage there. And how ironic it was is hmm. the bad, uh, the, this past snowstorm, we not this past one, but the big one we had on, on Monday, which happened to be the first Monday of the month. Right. That's when we do our maintenance in the parking lot. And I mean, that, that would have been a great time to shut it down Sunday night so the guys can get in there and plow it. That would have been a, a real great time. But it's winter and it's hard to jockey cars around. So we're going to have to come up with something to do with these parking lots here. Okay. Thank you. Fire department, Kevin. Yeah. Fire department. Wait, they had uh, uh, go ahead, Mayor. I was just wondering. They did the driveway alongside WT Gardner. I was just wondering when they were going to do the sidewalk in front of the building. I did tell them about that, Mary. Uh, the other day, when I was down here, uh, the president of the company, Gary Rogers, called me, and uh, I don't know what happened. I didn't. I didn't check it out today, but I can go back down and talk to him tomorrow. Yeah, it just hasn't been done yet, so I was just uh, hoping that maybe it'd be done tomorrow. Yeah, I'll, I'll get a hold of them tomorrow. I'll get a hold of them tomorrow, Mayor. Thanks. Yep. And uh, the fire department had 19 calls for the month of January. And uh, we, we didn't have a meeting for the month of January, I don't think. No, we didn't. No. Okay, on safety, we have adequate uh, personal protective equipment. And in recent weeks, we've tightened up our safety measures here at the Village Hall. We've restricted uh, more. Uh, rules in place to make sure that everyone is safe and has their mask on and keeps the proper distance. So we've done a lot of work there with that. Recreation. We canceled the recreation meeting for this uh, month. So there's not too much going on. Kevin, anything on the water department? Water. Water, we're working on a uh, green sand filter for magnesium. There's a problem in the village. Some people might know that a little water comes out a little brown every now and then. So we're working on that with the engineers, getting trying to get uh, plans together and stuff like that. And uh, we're looking at uh, the, either to re replace the tank on windless right now. So we're not sure what we're going to do. We have to get it inspected this year, I think it is. So the, the outside has, been, I think the outside has been inspected. Now they're going to go do the inside this year. So we're waiting on that. See what we're going to do with that. Okay, uh, Corey, you're still with us? Yeah, can hey. You give, can you give us an update on the grant activity? Sure. Um, so I actually, I, I should send it to all trustees. I just sent it to the finance um committee at the moment i gave a little rundown of some of the funding that we've spent already and we're waiting on some money back so um i i could share my screen if you need it it's just a little excel um let me see if i can okay um so this this uh just to give a little rundown i like i said i sent this to the finance committee um but in the near future, we, we should be expecting uh, 943,119.41 cents 
um, for the, these are not just, these are not all the grants that are open. These are just, this is money we've already spent and we're expecting stuff back. Um, I have another list of all of our current open grants that I've sent out to the trustees. So I just wanted to give a little update on that. Some of them uh, are still currently being updated. Uh, for instance, the TAP, I just, we just agreed on this money today. I just sent that to the DOT. So uh, we'll be expecting hopefully an answer from them very soon. I, besides that, I, the EPA, we finally got in touch with our new EPA rep. Uh, or the original one retired last year. And of course, with them not being in office, it's been a real struggle with contacting them and getting documents to them and stuff. We just got, I just had a phone meeting with them earlier this week and they actually moved us up in the list because they were so far behind. We sent them some phase one things, which is some of our testing and findings uh, for the bleachery site, which is a really big uh, polluted brownfield area that you know we want to we want to clean up and and hopefully use. So they just sent us back our comments. I just relayed them to KC now. Hopefully we can begin phase two very soon, maybe by this spring. And as far as the LWRP project, we also have a meeting. We had a meeting with the DEC last week. I have a meeting with the Department of State. Hopefully tomorrow, if they get back to me. Uh, we're going to continue our pilot projects. I've brought them up a few times here, the biochar in various areas, and then the stream goal one we've actually already done. We hope to have our steering committee meeting with uh, Wappinger, Intermunic Wappinger Creek Intermunicipal Council, and hopefully present our findings by early spring. And then we'll be finishing up that project, um, hopefully by the summer, or latest late summer. So. Uh, for a few of these projects, TAP, um, LWRP, the urban forestry, once we get the uh, Bain Park design, we hope to be closing up a lot of these grants that have been open for some time. Uh, in regards to the boathouse, all we're waiting on there is, I could stop sharing my screen too. All we're waiting on there for the boathouse is our uh, Duchess Mechanicals working with fish solutions at the moment on the security and the fire alarms. Um, I know they were there this weekend installing something. On the outside, we're waiting on a couple lamp posts and railings that are, you know, it's, unfortunately they're backward. And uh, once we get those, we can install them and then we'll be done with the boathouse and everything we wanted to do. I also just want to give one uh bit of info on the boathouse. I understand the lights are on uh, with the art piece and then the heat has been on. And I know, and rightfully so, people were wondering, well, why do we have the heat on on a building we're not currently using? Uh, what we installed there is radiant heat. And so it's essentially tubes under the concrete filled with fluid. And that heats the floors, which of course heats up where people are standing and it continues to rise. We chose that over the regular heat we were gonna put because that would have gone above people and all of the heat would have risen further up into the ceiling and uh, it really wouldn't have warmed up where people were actually standing. But the thing with radiant heat is it is heated with fluids in these tubes. And so if we just shut them off, um, the tubes would freeze, expand, break, and you know, we'd have a serious problem. So we are going to drain them and turn it off because obviously we're not going to use it soon and we're not going to need heat probably until October or November later this year. Um, so I know someone, I know we shut it off, I think last weekend, someone went in and shut the heat off, but um, we turned it back on and it is on at the moment. We plan on turning this off and Duchess Mechanical wants to, and this is something the trustees we can talk about whoever we do are gonna have access to this building or who's in charge. Um, they wanna give a little walkthrough of the system. So we obviously know how to turn it on, how to turn it off properly. Um, so, you know, of course we wouldn't end up freezing the tubes. It is a long process though. The, the radiant heat is meant to, it's a heating system that's meant to sort of turn on and stay on for a bit. So if we decide to turn it off, 
Uh, it's not something you can change your mind with the next day and say, actually, let's turn it back on immediately. So it's kind of a process to turn on and off. Um, so when we want to do that, and I know at this point, I know we want to do it for, for this year, uh, but when we want to do that in the future, it, it sort of has to be, uh, has to have a little more thought behind it than just we're not using it right now. Let's let's shut it off. So, so what you're saying is it's not like a light switch. Exactly. It's not like a light switch. Okay. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a little bit more of a process. Turning the valve off underneath your sink. It's a little more. Complex. Right. So, yeah, I just wanted to throw that out there. Like I said, we will be shutting it off. So the, it's not just going to remain on at the moment. But um, for the moment, those those are. That's about it. Uh, and the bow, I, I've been talking with the boa. They sent me back some comments and, and I've sent in our last payment request. So hopefully we'll get uh, that's, you know, not of course as much as others, but any amount helps. We'll, we'll be getting the last bit of that, uh, that grant done and closed out as well. So in the next few months, we'll be closing out a lot of grants that we've been doing since before I was even brought here. So um, yeah, uh, things should start to be rolling, especially hopefully as uh, more organizations start getting in their office a bit more and maybe maybe some things that have been falling behind and getting backed up start to go a little smoother. So that's all I have. If anyone has any uh, questions, comments, or concerns. Thank you, Corey. No, thank you, Corey. Uh, I think you're breaking up a bit. I don't know who that is per se. No, I'm good, Corey. Thanks. Thank you, Corey. Thank you, well. Corey. I am in receipt of three questions from comments from residents since the last meeting. One of them was addressed tonight by New York State DOT. Dave Walker did an outstanding job, I think with that one. Yep. Uh, Deputy Mayor Hoover brought to my attention that there were a lack of speed signs on East and West Main Street in the building. He asked me to look into that two weeks ago. I have a comment from a resident about that. And in the meantime, I was able to have uh, get a status from New York State DOT that they will install four speed signs, two on West Main, two, one on East Main and one on South Avenue. One will be at West Street and West Main, Givens Avenue down at the bottom of the hill, one up by Mazir Park, and another on South Avenue by Prospect Street. So uh, it's true, there were a lack of, of signs. So those four will be make that improvement. They would put them up now, but of course, with the winter being the way it is, they said they have to hold off, but it's certainly in the works to do that. The third one is there's a concern of about from a re, uh, business owner on uh, West Main that there's a safety concern <clears throat> from the business owners on West Main about snow removal in front of vacant buildings and inadequate removal to provide safe parking and garbage receptacle placement. With only parking on the south end lane of 9D and West Main Street, snow removal is crucial. So that's a state road and I know that it's very narrow there, especially when there are cars on that side of the street, they're not on the uh, east side that it is difficult, but then again, this was a historical uh, storm that we had, but uh, Kevin, you might wanna take a look at that. Uh, I, I, I know what you're talking about, John. I, I, I did look at that and uh, I'm, not, I'm gonna have to call the, uh, the finance committee. I do have the report of last weekend when they were out there, how much it cost. And uh, I'll call the finance committee and see if they're okay doing that. And we'll set some, maybe I could set something up with Pete. Okay, I have that uh, information. I just, I, I just got his his uh, highway report, and I just looked at it. So I, he does have. So you're talking that you, are you, you're breaking up, Jen. Kevin, you would be talking about our 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 highway guys can, come in overtime. Yes. Can you hear me? No, you're breaking up. Okay. 
You can't hear me? I hear you. I don't know. Can you hear me now? Yep. Okay. You're talking about our guys, right? Correct. Yeah. Our guys. Okay. Yep. Our guys. Okay. I'll get back with you tomorrow if that's okay. Yeah, yeah. I'll give you a call tomorrow or, you know, okay. whatever. I, I, and I'll reach out to Brian and Mary because I know they sit on for finance. And I'll call the numbers of, of last weekend's. It seems like they're overtime is what it is for the guys. Those were the three comments that I received since the last meeting. John, I'd like to thank you for uh, with this, help out the state with the 30 mile an hour signs. I'm sure the, the resident on South Avenue will be happy to see that when they're up. Yeah, good. Okay. You're welcome. You're certainly welcome. Uh, is there anything else as far as comments from the board? Back to the snow removal. This past weekend i thought they were going to do main street this past weekend that's why we approved for some overtime what we just what what was determined when we did it on I, I met out with pete and when jennifer and i met pete and the high and not the highway but the village hall we were going to go to curb to curb and i went out and met pete on east main street john kozak was out plowing from curb to curb they're going to bring the guys in to clean it all up because it was pretty sloppy as a Friday night. And they brought up on uh, cleaning that all up and getting rid of the snow piles because they was having a hard time pushing it. When they, you can only take it so far and left a big pile. So they're gonna bring the loader in. three guys were brought in for that night shift. And John brought up about cleaning the sidewalks off. Pete says, well, let's see how it looks. Let's, let's, see, let's see what we can do when we, we'll try it out. And I woke up Saturday morning our son Sunday morning, I'm sorry. Or Saturday. Yeah, Saturday morning. And uh I seen the sidewalks were done and it I thought I thought I thought they did a great job on that. For uh because the problem is they can they gotta shut down they can only work on the main on the state road from midnight to five AM. They were only out there from midnight to four AM and there was only three guys. Um, I would just have let a like to have been invited, being I do sit on the highway committee, so I didn't know that was all going on. Well, I, I did text text you, Brian, and Jennifer about this on Thursday. Yeah, I just thought it was for West Main. That's all. all right. Okay. Are there any other comments? From the board, public. Okay, of course, the public, if they want, they can write the comment and we will address it at the next meeting. Okay, that concludes the formal portion of tonight's meeting. I think you mentioned to go into executive session. Uh, Attorney Wallace. So, yes. does somebody want to make a motion to go into exec? I'll make it. Trustee Lammers. Second. Second. Trustee Deputy Mayor Huber. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carry. You're going into executive session. Rich? The board has entered executive session. Please stand by. The meeting will resume when they return. Mary's not in. Mary's in. Mary's in now? Yep. Okay. All right. So you're back in the uh, main session and uh, we're back from executive session. And I understand that uh, there are going to be two motions um, as a result of our executive session discussions. Is there a motion to accept um, some of $5,000 from the state for the damage uh, caused by the, their plows to our uh, property? I'll make that motion. I'll second it. Okay, so the motion was made by 
Trustee Huber. Seconded by Trustee Marco John. Okay, is a, is there a vote? What is it? What say you? Aye. 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 Any nays? Okay, the motion passes to accept the sum of five thousand dollars, and we'll let our insurance companies deal with that. Okay, the second motion has to do deal with the condemnation matter uh, involving the state. Department of Transportation for the widening of Route 9 for the purpose of installing sidewalks. Um, is there a motion to accept uh, the offer of compensation in the amount of $2,500? So I'll that. make the motion. Hey, Trustee I'll second. Catalano. Trustee Catalano. Motion to accept the sum of $2,500 um, in full settlement of the state's claim against us. All, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, any nays? Motion passes 5-0. Who made that motion? That was Trustee Lammers? Correct. Okay. All right, guys. We're good? All right, Greg. Good meeting. Good night. Actually, Thank you, everyone. Yeah. It's 6-0. Six 6-0. Zero. Six zero. I'm sorry. Yeah. Thank you got you. Mark and John sharing with me. Got you. All right, 6-0 for both. Yeah. Yep. All right, I'll be in touch with you guys uh, in the next two weeks about this pandemic thing. Ah, sounds good. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night, everyone.